I mean, everybody loves finding stuff. Doing the in-water work is where I get the most personal enjoyment. Second to that though, I would say it's sharing that information with other people and watching them get as excited about it as I am. Because I think a lot of folks don't realize that this history happened, you know, right in our backyard here. I see that as an important part of our task is exposing that to as many people as possible. About this group of artifacts that we have would have been on the backside uh, of a Muslim I've always style. been fascinated with history. You know, I think as a child, like many children, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I was super fascinated with dinosaurs, which led to an, a general interest in archaeology and history. I was brought as an intern here to Lake Champlain. Fell in love with both with the museum, Vermont in general, and Lake Champlain in particular. I think I was certainly attracted to the abundance of well-preserved shipwrecks in Lake Champlain and the amazing history that they contain. Lake Champlain has a very long maritime history. It's the common thread through all of these stories and projects that really tie things together. We are actively generating new content for the museum and for publications and for sharing with the public through our active archeological research. So here we are at Arnold's Bay, and this is the site of really exciting activity on October 13th of 1776. It's mid-morning, around noon. The British fleet caught back up with the American fleet as they fled south, and a two and a half hour running gun battle ensued the American fleet was being very heavily damaged and was at risk of being captured entirely. Benedict Arnold made the bold decision to pull his remaining vessels here into what was then known as Ferris's Bay, where he could abandon those boats and burn them while his sailors and soldiers escaped overland. So one of the things we're attempting to verify or to clarify through this archaeological research is the location of each of these uh, vessels when it was burned and abandoned. So we are uh, doing an intensive metal detecting survey of the bottom of Arnold's Bay in hopes of identifying clusters of artifacts that will pinpoint the location of the burned vessels. The first thing we've got to do is go through all of the artifacts that we've found, of which this is only a small representative sample, and determine which ones of them are diagnostic, which ones of them are actually adding clues to our story that we're trying to uh, suss out. One of the most common artifacts we're finding are musket balls. These are made of lead, and interestingly, these are almost all 60 caliber, which is actually quite small, and indicates that many of the American soldiers were probably using their hunting muskets. One of the other more interesting things that we've been finding are probably, probably were musket balls, but are now these melted pieces of lead that have then cooled into, you know, really odd shapes. But quite possibly these are lead musket balls that melted during the burning of those vessels. This one seems to have settled into a seam between two planks possibly as it cooled, and it has this interesting configuration. Now, finding these pieces of melted lead um, in conjunction with lots of nails and spikes, like the first one we looked at, are giving us an idea of, that we may be honing in on the location of one of the burning, where one of the vessels was burned. Probably one of the most engaging and, and interesting artifacts that we've found so far is this uh, brass shoe buckle. Um, and this is actually only half of a shoe buckle. There would have been another piece on this side, um, which we unfortunately did not locate. But this is what have held the two flaps at the top of a colonial era shoe together uh, and kept it on a soldier's foot. These soldiers were jumping off of these boats, sometimes into deeper water than they probably expected, sometimes losing their ammunition and other things they were carrying. And I can only imagine it would have been very easy for your shoe to fall off or float off as you were struggling ashore. So starting to see these patterns where here's a lot of boat construction material and melted lead in one area. And outside of that, to either side of that is where we're finding the loose musket balls 
things like the shoe buckle where you can almost visualize these guys jumping off either side of the boat and scurrying ashore and losing some of their stuff uh, along the way. These should remain nice and stable for a good long time and be able to be shared and interpreted to as many people as possible. Instilling within the public a sense of stewardship for these resources, you know, so that they care about them and what happens to these sites and the artifacts within them.